What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share the video. Hit the join button and become a member. Why? Well, members get exclusive content. Be at you, I'll be at you by tomorrow, members, with some more exclusive content. Get involved, people. Well, this episode takes us to the Los Angeles County Jail in 1999. I was there in 1998 and 1999 before I went to Delano and then to High Desert in 1999 with a 10 year sentence for a robbery. <clears throat> At any rate, a war brewed and then transpired somewhat of a war between the Black Peace Stone Bloods in the Harlem 30 Crips. As some of you may know, they are arch enemies, arch enemies on the street. They do not get along whatsoever. There in the county jail then and even now, uh, there was a lot of gang banging going on. A lot of young active dudes running into court tanks, squabbling up with all of their enemies going into separate, different transferring, holding tanks, squabbling up their enemies, going into the modules, squabbling up with their enemies, stabbing each other, etc. Uh, an abundance of bloodshed and bloody walls in the Los Angeles County Jail. Oftentimes, these wars between different factions go on rampantly and unchecked in the Los Angeles County Jail. There in the module was a young dude from Harlem. Real, the young homie was skinny. <clears throat> he's young, 20, 21, no more than 22 years old. So he's active, as is most people at that age in the Los Angeles County Jail. You're squabbling your enemies. That's just what's going on. It's unfortunate. And uh, uh, hopefully one day we can get it together. I, I can't talk down on it because I was there and I was involved in it as well. But my violence was measured. And I always preach to the brothers to put that shit aside and prepare ourselves for the real opposition. I explained that when we beat each other like this, we're just weakening ourselves for the opposition to have a better chance at us when we go at them. If, as I explained before, if I have a fight with a black man there in the Los Angeles County Jail or here on the street. But let's keep it in the Los Angeles County Jail or prison. And he blackens my eye, busts out my mouth, swells up my lip, swells up my lip. And two days later, we have a riot with another race. But when we had this riot, now I got a black eye. My hand is, is my knuckles are hurting and aching from the fights that I didn't had days before with my own people. So I'm not at 100% when I go at it with this other race, compromising myself and the black community. So we weaken, our, we weaken each other when we go at each other and make it easier for the people who really hate us to have a, an advantage when we do go at them. Let's come together, brothers. And, but there in the Los Angeles County Jail, this was going on rampantly and unchecked. And it continues to this day. So the young homie from Harlem, he's just someone who's active and is being acclimated to his environment, which endorses and encourages fights with your opposition. One night there on the tier, he's talking loud. So that we all can hear. Now here in the modules, a few dudes from Harlem here. Some neighborhoods and a few of my homes. Only a couple of Damus. Only a couple of Bloods are there. Damus are Bloods for those who may not know. I have people even in Australia watching my channel. Tap in Australia. So they may not. So I have to break some of this stuff down. So uh, Bloods. It's only a couple of Bloods there. The Bloods have another module that they're kicking it in here in 1999, and this is not one of them. The young dude from Harlem, he is about that life. 
I'll give him credit. He wasn't just talking. I personally witnessed him have multiple squabbles there in the Los Angeles County Jail, even though he is a slight dude in stature. He's on the tier, and he's making it clear that when he goes to court tomorrow, he's going to be ready to squabble any BPS that is in the court tank with him. He, like Tiny Goofy and Porky that I've mentioned before from 107 Hoover, had made a commitment that they, wanted, that they were going to squabble every enemigo that came through, no matter who it was or where they were from. If they were an enemy of their hood, they was going to squabble them. And apparently, the young homie from Harlem had made the same decision. He was in there fighting. He's on a tear, and he's saying when he goes into the court tanks tomorrow, he's going to hit motherfuckers up, ask them where they're from, and he's going to try to catch a dude from BPS. I'm saying this dude is real small. I know some dudes from Blackstone that are big. They're going to put your ass on your pockets. But he had the heart of a lion. Size notwithstanding. And one of his young homies on the chair told him, man, just go to court, bro, and try to rectify your case. Focus in on that. Because I used to tell dudes in prison, too. I used to tell my cellies that can name every one of their homeboys, can name every incident that ever happened in their hood. And I asked them, what was the name of your DA? They don't know. What's the name of your judge? They don't know. Who's the bailiff, the court reporter? You don't know nothing about your case. You got life in prison. Because you were in the county jail focusing on game banking. You sitting there telling me all these war stories about the county jail or about what happened on the street. What happened in the courtroom? How are you going to win your appeal? How are you going to get back home? Learn the name of your DA and your judge. Learn about these damn appeals, man. Your focus is not where it needs to be. Man, we've been bamboozled. The young dude from Harlem is telling him, go to court and handle your case. Don't worry about these dudes from Blackstone, bro. You'll catch up with them later. When you go to court, you need to be taking care of business. We'll catch them around the county jail, and we'll handle it. It's going in one ear and out the other. A few people are encouraging him. A couple of Harlem telling him, yeah, handle your business, bro. Go in there and catch one of them dudes. You know what's up, go up. I just so happened to have court the next morning as well. And I knew that he was going to be in a court tape with me, the dude from Harlem. I also knew there was going to be some Blackstones there, at least one. They come to court often. And if one of them wasn't there, it's going to be a 20 blood there or whatever, someone that would take up the slack. If he had a problem with the Blackstones, then you got a problem with me, Will Howling. And the next morning, they come and get us early in the morning for court. People don't want to be bothered. People are irritated, going to court, fighting for their life. Nobody wants to hear you talking about where you from and all this. So fucking what, man? I'm about to go in here and fight this damn judge and the DA. We handle that later. Some people don't get this. And he's going and he's looking for trouble. He's looking for a fight. I'm not going to knock him for it. Because this is what is going on in the county jail. He's just doing what he was taught. What he has seen. That if you do this, then you're active. If you go in there and you're looking for a fight from your opposition. And he goes in there and he says nothing. He's just pacing back and forth in the big holding tanks right there in the county jail. But he has a sinister look on his face. As if he's ready to attack any and everyone. But he hasn't hit anyone up. This is sort of throwing me off. Because I know that he's not just all talk. I've seen him in action. And he made it clear on the tier the night before that he's about to come to court and put in an abundance of work. But he's being very silent. And I'm wondering what the hell's going on. Perhaps he recognizes someone and has changed his mind. We get on a bus. And when we get to the real courthouse and get in the court tanks, his mood changes a bit. He puts his paperwork down and he gets up and says, 
I'm such and such from Horn. Who in here from Blackstone? And the dude stood up and said, I'm from Blackstone. The dude was young, but cut up and stocky. Had a little fro, a little light brown skin home. And looking at him, I didn't see no cowardice in him whatsoever. He stood up immediately and said, I'm from Blackstone. And dude, and dude from Harlem was like, okay, man, it's Harlem Crip. We were like, all right, man, it's Blackstone, but I'm here in court. I'm just trying to go to court, fight my case, man. We, we handle that when we get to the county then, bro. Or at the court, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So he he's not turning it down. He's letting it be known he's willing to fight. And I believe him. But he's saying right now, I'm going to go in here and see my mother and my family in the courtroom and this damn judge and DA. I'm not finna be, you know, I'm not trying to be fighting the court team before I walk in the damn courtroom. Going in there with a busted nose or whatever. And the judge, like, man, God, you in here fighting for your life and you in the court teams fighting on, on some gang shit? Really? You know, so he's saying, man, we are howling at the court. When we get back to the county jail. Now, later on when we see each other, he's saying, as soon as we get off the bus, they're going to put us in some different court tanks. And as soon as they put us in these other court tanks, we're going it in before we get back to the module. We're going we gonna to get it in today. But the dude from Harlem, even though the other guy from BPS has a bigger stature, much bigger, he's really pressing the issue and saying, man, we ain't got to wait, bro. I'm trying to squabble right now because he had already said what he had came to do. He knows that I'm right there. And others that heard him say this. I'm not saying he was showing off in front of us. I'm just saying that he stuck to what he had said. So he's saying, no, man, let's squabble up right now, bro. You know what I'm saying? So dude from BPS, he had had enough. He had already tried to tell him what was going on. So he said, okay. And turned around, put something down, and rushed the dude from Harlem. And he hit him one time. That was it. But he hit him hard. You can hear the smack. Bam! You, you can, I'm looking at it and you can hear it. And dude from Harlem was out before he hit the ground. His eyes had closed. And he went back like that. His eye, he was knocked out before he hit the ground. In fact, the ground woke him up. But he was bleeding about the back of his head. Having incurred these injuries. And eventually, now at this time they didn't have cameras in the holding tanks. They do now. I said in one of my prior videos, you can really credit the Hoovers. This is not to be braggadocious because... Again, who gives a damn about all this bullshit? But the Hoovers were putting in so much work at a time in that county jail in the court tanks that they put, not just the Hoovers, gangs, period. But we had a war going on. I'll get to that soon. And they had to put cameras in the court tanks because too many people were coming out of there leaking and they had no clue about who had done what. But at that time, there were no cameras in the court tanks in 1999. So the, when the police come in to get him for court, he's down there leaking. They don't know what happened. Everybody's sitting down just like reading their paperwork. I don't know. So they come and take him out, and then they come in and check everybody's hands. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Hey, let me see your hands. They're trying to see if you've been fighting. If you, you, know, you have a cut, your hand is swollen maybe. They check your face. Maybe the dude from Harlem was able to swing back and get you with one, so they check and see if if you've been fighting, any evidence of a fight that you may have had because they don't know who put this dude on the ground like this. They had no cameras in there. Ain't nobody about to say nothing. And, but oftentimes, they get the wrong person when they come and look at your hands. You done had a fight three days before with, with, your, with your enemy, and now they, it, they, they cannot find a person in this situation, and your hands are a little swole from the fight you had three days ago, and they talking about, get him, get him, get him. Man, I ain't done nothing. You, you, you literally didn't have this fight right now. The evidence that they see is from a fight that you got away with three or four days ago. At any rate, they had to take somebody for this situation as far as they were concerned because his head was busted open some. And they came and got somebody at the court tank that had nothing to do with it. They, they later on released him. But dude from Harlem, well, he's in medical in the Los Angeles County Jail. And when we got back to the module that day, his homies is asking, what happened? 
well, where's the homie at? How you end up in medical? And people explained to him, and I told him what happened. They asked me personally, man, what happened? I said, shit, he went there, dude from BPF, wanted to squabble, he got to squabble, and he got knocked out. You know what I'm saying? And, he, and his head hit the ground. So they're upset, and they don't want to accept it. Even though they know that he really started it, that he was asking for the trouble because he had said the night before that he was going to court with dubious intentions. With nefarious intentions even. That he was going looking for a squabble from a BPS. He had made that explicitly clear. And he found it. And they don't even know that in the court tank, the dude from BPS was trying to say, man, we're handling it later. He didn't even want to squabble right then and there. Not out of fear. Just, I, I know it was not, I'm looking at him. Just out of the fact that he was trying to go to court and take care of his business. He made that a priority over game banking. But the dude from Harlem didn't want to hear. He wanted to smoke right then and there. And he got it. He just got, he just lost. He got knocked out. But now they're not happy. This is their young workhorse. Their young rider, he's active and putting in work, keeping Harlem on the map right here in the Los Angeles County Jail. And the fact that he'd been knocked out before he even hit the ground, and now he's lined up somewhere in medical, and they don't know what's going on, where well, they put out word that it's on sight with the black pea stone. And in fact, as soon as we catch one of y'all, well, we're going to put one of y'all in the hospital as well. The BPSs, they got that word. They ain't no joke. So they started to prepare themselves for a bit of a war. And the Harlem's, well, they caught a black peace stone a few days later, right there in the visiting area. And all hell it did break loose. And I'll bring you that in part two of the Harlems versus the BPSs. Stay free, people!